This video is for informational purposes only. Attempting this installation is done at your own risk. We are not responsible for any damage or malfunction caused to your device during or after the procedure outlined in this video. Please proceed with caution. Always disconnect from the electricity supply before servicing any electrical equipment. Hi, this is Brad from Isla Instruments, and this is going to be a quick video to show you how to install your S2400 DSP card. Uh, this should be a reasonably simple task for you to carry out, uh, but it's easy for me to say because I do stuff like this all day, every day. So what I want to preface this video with is if you're apprehensive in any way or a bit too scared to do the job, we've got no problem installing the card for you. We just ask that you pay the shipping, but we will install the card for you free of charge. We'd much rather do that than you end up messing your S2400 up. Uh, now, so you're sooner or later you're going to get this box in the mail and inside the box you will find your S2400 DSP card. Uh, pretty simple to install. We're going to go through that. Here's the card. So you'll each get one of these in the mail. And also inside the box is a little bag with some brass standoffs and a couple of audio cables. Also inside the box, you'll see this uh, flyout that has a QR code in it. So if you run into issues, you can use this card, uh, scan the code with your phone. It will take you straight to the support section of our website. And from there, you can either jump on the forum or send us a support ticket and we'll get to you as soon as we can. You're only going to need two tools for this installation. One is a standard Phillips screwdriver. If you don't have a Phillips screwdriver, you probably shouldn't be attempting to do this job in the first place. The other thing you're going to need is a T10 uh, Torx driver. Uh, now, not everyone might have one of these, but there's going to be a link in the description uh, for an Amazon link to get one. But you can just go to any hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, B&Q, Wix whatever your favorite hardware store is. However, if you haven't got a specific T10 Torx bit, you might also have one of these little kits that uh, that you'd often get at Christmas from your grandparents that have got all of these little uh, little bits on them. Um, so have a look on there. And you, if it's got Torx bits, you can just sort of feel if that bit fits in there in grips and you're off to the races. Uh, so to start off, what we're going to do is take these aluminium sides off and that's what you need the T10 Torx bit for. So there are quite a few screws on these aluminium sides. Uh, and so just take your time, make sure you've got um, plenty of space around you. Uh, don't have a hot coffee or a drink next to where you're working. Uh, and you know, just, just, just take your time. So what I'm probably going to do is end up fast forwarding through this bit because you don't want to see me uh, sitting there trying to waffle while I'm taking out 18 screws. Okay, so with the screws off, with the with the with the torque screws off, now we have got eight uh, Phillips screws. So you have four here at the back, one, two, three, four, and then you've got four underneath at the front of the machine, one, two, three, four. You might want to use a towel to gently place your S24 down on. So with the screws removed, we're going to gently move the top panel of the S2400 to the side. And if you take a peek in there, you're going to see a ribbon cable. Now get your hands under there and just gently left and right rock that forward a little bit. It shouldn't take too much force, but if you hold it tight there, you should be able to reasonably easy pull it off of those pins. Uh, and at that point, we will also disconnect these two audio connectors. Just be gentle with them. It's pretty difficult to do it from the plastic, but if you rock them backwards and forwards a little bit like that, they will come out. Again, just be gentle. Uh, and disconnect the headphone cable. And now you have got two separate pieces of your S2400. So I'm gonna put this 
top panel to the side for a moment. And the next thing that we're going to do is remove uh, four screws from the CPU board and we're going to replace those screws with some brass standoffs that I've got in this bag. You'll find them in your box. So you don't need to remove the middle screw on the board. That one stays put, but the four outer screws uh, you want to remove. And for this last screw, you're going to need to pull this ribbon off. Uh, so just keep some fingers on the board just to keep it stable. And inch by inch, you'll, you'll just remove the ribbon cable. Uh, and then remove that, that last screw there. And then what we're going to do is replace those screws with the standoffs. So the screws that were removed, this one here, here, here and here, the four outer screws. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to twist these brass standoffs into the place where you took the screws from. And they're going to support the DSP board when we mount that. Now you only need to do these up thumb tight uh, because when you screw the DSP board in they're going to make them bite up further. Just make sure that they are screwed in enough so that they're actually touching the, the PCB once you've got them screwed in. Because if you don't, uh, then the DSP board won't uh, sit down properly. If you really need to get some pliers on these, then do so. Just be gentle. But you shouldn't need to use much more than a thumb twist. Uh, there we go. It's in. Uh, and so now the next thing we're going to put on is our DSP card. So the way that this mounts is that we've got these two rows of pins and they are going to marry up to the row of pins that is on the CPU board here. Take your time when you get this on. Um, it's important that you're not misaligned by any pins. It's possible that you could damage the machine if you turn it on and the pins aren't aligned correctly. So just take your time, um, offer the card up, um, having plenty of light and looking at it from an angle as you attach it is gonna help you. If you just rest it on the top of where you think it's gonna go um, and then look down the holes that you're gonna be putting the screws into, if you're looking directly down and they look aligned, then you're probably um, on the right track. So I'm just looking from this angle with my eyes here before I then press down on the card and then that sits into the pins. And I'm just gonna check by looking at it from different angles to make sure that I'm on all of the pins correctly. And that looks good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to replace the screws. Now on some machines, the standoff might be um, slightly misaligned because at some point during production, we moved one of these standoffs. Um, if you can't get a screw in that one, don't worry. Just do the, the other three. Um, but here we go. So I'm going to put the other screws in. And then tighten the screws back up. Again, don't over tighten them. The card's not going to go anywhere. Just just finger tight is is ample. Okay, and then that should be nice and solid. 
I'm just checking that those pins are all in the right place and they look good. And then what we want to do is reconnect the ribbon cable. Now, the the connector that's on the DSP card has got a key in it, and that key is like a notch that's taken out of the plastic, which you can see me pointed to. And that notch is only on one side. Um, so a lot, get your cable so that the notch is on the outside of the cable there, like that, but connect the output board side first. It will be much easier to connect the ribbon that way. Again, take your time, make sure you look at it in the light, um, and make sure that your pins are aligned before you press down on the connector. That's reconnected nicely. And now I can go ahead, just bend this round into the socket and press down and we are connected. Lovely jubbly. Okay, so now what we're gonna move on to now is the audio cables. Now, when you get the DSP card, you will get two new shorter audio cables. All of the audio cables are exactly the same, um, apart from their lengths. So it doesn't matter which way uh, you get them round um, with which board you're connecting to. But the short ones, if you look at the DSP board there, all of the, the, the connectors are labeled. The top set of connectors, as, as you're looking at this video, is to go into the UI board, which is the top half of your S2400. And the bottom two connectors here go back to the output board. So what I'm going to do here is just connect the um, the UI board connectors first. I'm just going to click them in. Again, these connectors are keyed, so you can't get them the wrong way around. They'll either go in or they won't. So they are connected and ready to be reconnected to the UI board. And then from the UI board, we're going to remove these two audio cables that we left in there. Just gently pry them, little by little, rock them out, and they should come out okay. Again, these cables are all the same apart from their length. So this top connector here is our mix, mix volume connector. So pressing the connector into that socket. And then when you come to look here, you'll see output board mix. So the top connector of the output board is going to plug in to this connector here. If you can't get the connector in, turn it round. You'll notice that the red wires, how I'm assembling it, are all to my right. And then we connect the headphone cable, the headphone volume cable to the output board and that one comes over here like so and at this point we are ready to reconnect the top half of the machine so what we're going to do is we're going to remove this ribbon cable again gently and we're going to reconnect it to the CPU board first bef before we put the rest of the machine together um, on this machine, the red is going to go to the back of the machine. The red, the red on this cable. Um, just help yourself by sort of orientating the ribbon so it's coming straight up. And by using the same principle as you did with the other one, just make sure that you're aligned on the connector. Align with all the pins. Um, once you can see that you're good, you can press down. Okay, and then we've got that our ribbons are ready. So I'm going to tuck that ribbon under these audio cables and this will be ready to come out of the side. Uh, remember that the audio cable that's closest to the outside of the machine is the one for the mix output, not the headphone output. This one is for the headphone. Now I'm going to... I will not be able to build that upside down, so what I'm going to do is bring the machine up to my chest, uh, arrest it there, and then I'm going to bring this one up. And if you can try to get the camera in there, first off, I'm just going to reconnect the headphone connector, push that onto the output board. That's that done. And I, like I said, I'm resting this front against my stomach, my chest. Um, the audio connector to the outside is the one for the mix 
output. So as I bring this out, the mix output is the one on the top and the headphone is the one on the bottom. Um, it doesn't matter which one you connect first. Probably be easier if you connect the bottom one first, which was headphones. And if you happen to connect these the wrong way around, it's not going to hurt the machine, um, but it means that the top, uh, the mix volume and the headphone volume will be swapped. And that's how you know if you got those the wrong way around. We get them the wrong way around quite a bit. Uh, now, this the final connector to connect is the ribbon connector. And again, take your time and make sure that those pins are aligned. Because this is on the outside, you can get away with just gently putting those first two top pins in first and then pushing the connector on, like so. All right? Uh, and then gently bring the machine back down to you. And then basically the reversal of disassembly. We're gonna assemble it. So just put our, start off with putting our uh, back screws in. Now a tip here would be to not tighten the screws up. Um, if you find that the S2400 is um, rocking a little bit on the, on the tabletop uh, once you've put it back together, uh, you want to loosen these screws off. Apply pressure to make it flat and then tighten the screws up. Okay, so I've got my four screws on the rear and the four screws on the front uh, now attached and I'm going to start reattaching the sides. Now, as I said at the start of the video, these are handed. Um, so the left side needs to go back on the left. Um, if you've got it wrong, then the holes here won't be countersunk. So my suggestion here is to not do them up too tight first in the first instance. You want to go pretty light with them, um, and that makes them a lot easier to maneuver once you've got them on. So get your front one on first and then move to the back to get your alignment correct and just put them in there loose but they're in and then go around and put in the rest of the screws and if you find that you you can't find the hole like like I just did there just loosen loosen the ones off a touch and then you should find it easier to get the screws in. And so once you've got all of the screws in place, it's time to put the unit down flat and just check making sure of course that you're on a flat surface uh, just check that the machine is stable and it's not it's not rocking uh, and once you're happy with that you can then go ahead and start tightening all of the screws uh, on the side panels so with that done we'll plug the machine in and give it a quick test a few moments later Okay, so with the card installed, we'll now move over to the machine and turn it on. And when it boots up, the DSP card takes a little bit longer to boot up than the machine. So if we press bank and zero now, we can see no DSP card installed or communication error. Now if I give it a few more seconds and press it again, then we go into the DSP mixer. And when you see that screen, you know that you've got a successful installation. We'll close out the video there because any demonstration of what the DSP card is and what it's doing will be left for different videos. As I said before, this video is purely just an instructional to get you with the card installed. Thank you.